So it's always the fun part. I wish the Zoom connection to YouTube was actually accurate as far as the timing is concerned, because mm. it seems like you're on and then There's you're a lag going live. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So here live. we go. Me... I like how you say that. I love how you say that going live. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Well, um, I just closed the window I needed, but that's okay. We're, you know what? Here's the thing. We're going to just start out of the gate. And I, I, Mercury retrograde has such a bad rap, truly. I mean, I feel like everyone blames everything that goes wrong on Mercury retrograde during the time period. And even when it isn't Mercury retrograde. But I will say, and I even have a Mercury in retrograde in my natal chart, which actually for, you know, in theory is easier because mm -hmm. it's a comfortable energy. This particular Mercury in retrograde has been challenging. And maybe yep. it's because it's occurring during eclipse season. I don't know, but I'm curious if anybody watching has had this experience. Technology, not cooperating. Well, it's also Kazemi with the sun at the same time. So it's it makes it much stronger when it's in Kazemi. Oh, good point. Very good point. Um, and Chiron. You know, Chiron, Mercury, and the sun all together. Clump. <laughs> Kaboom. Kaboomba. <laughs> Well, and then traveling, just the traffic, and then the aggression on the road here in South Florida is next level. Wow. I'm not really sure what's going on, but people, I've been sending messages to my family and to my friends, be careful on the roads, take your time, don't be in a rush. Uh, it's, it is, it's crazy out there, people. Crazy. So anyway, um, hello, Amalia, hello. Natalio, and Madeline Parker here with you today day for the cosmic chat for this upcoming Scorpio full moon, which is occurring on April 23rd at 7.48 p.m. Eastern. That would be uh, 4.48 p.m. Pacific. And it's at four degrees, 17 minutes. Okay. I'm going to start out like we, we normally do on these cosmic chats. I'm going to give a little a little summary, a little rundown of what I'm seeing and experiencing and as it pertains to the moon. And then Madeline is going to run with it and share all of the info that is supportive for us for each of the signs. And I'll be sharing flower, supportive Yay. flower energy to anchor in that and also as a remedy for whatever might be coming up for that particular sign. So, oh, Scorpio, Scorpio, Scorpio. This is already for me, I'm a, I, I personally am a Scorpio ascendant. This moon, this um, full moon is squaring my act, my natal moon. I am feeling the emotions of this moon coming up already. What so, degree is your ascendant? It's a little off. So it's at 14. So this is not, you know, it's about 10 degrees off, but it's, I definitely am feeling it. Um, the, you know, the eclipses, which were, you know, what was that now? you know, six months ago, 12 months ago, um, were right on my ascendant. So I was feeling all of that. So I feel like there's still this acclimation period that's, that's occurring. Um, and you know, what's interesting. I also looked up the last, the, the Scorpio new moon occurred on, uh, on November 13th in 2023. So six months ago. And it's, it would be, it's an interesting inquiry to go back. And I did this before getting on today because I wanted to be able to speak to this from my own personal experience. I went back to look at my journal to see what was going on at that time and what has changed since then. Is there a completion that's taken place? Because right now at a full moon, it's a completion time. And what I noticed was that there were some significant health challenges that were happening at the time that I wouldn't say are completely sorted, but they're nothing like they were before. So I would say there is a bit of a tying up the bow on that. Um, I was definitely in a very emotionally challenged space and time six months ago. And I feel like even though there are emotional challenges, there are manageable emotional challenges. In November, it felt a lot bigger than now. Um, so the reason I bring that up is for folks who are maybe feeling like, boy, geez, like I feel like I've been, I've been run over again and again and again for a period of time, which I can relate to. And I think a lot of us can relate to if you have any sort of journaling practice, or even if you look back at photos and you see where you were six months ago, you'll, it'll, it'll re, um, ignite or, spark your imagine your memory of things that happened and how far you've come in that amount of time. Um, because there is a, 
there is a shift and a change that's taking place for all of us. Um, so because of this Scorpio full moon, there are, there's a deep emotional space being created. There's also the highlighting that full moon showing you where you might need to make changes and that you may feel resistance to those changes. We've got a lot of, a lot of planetary energy in Pisces, Aries, and Taurus. Madeline, I'm sure we'll be talking about that and showing everyone. We have a gigantic uh, Uranus-Jupiter conjunction happening on the 20th, right before this uh, full moon. So there's a lot of cosmic energy that is encouraging us, maybe in some cases, forcing us to make some changes. Um, you might have these surface type relationships that will fall away. So if, if there's not a deep connection within some of your relationships that aren't feeling super fulfilling, they may disappear. Um, and you might notice you have a strong desire for emotional connections. I mean, I know for me, I'm, I'm really, um, reaching out to and making an effort with those people in my life that I really want to keep a, a strong bond with. Now, the sun and the moon are square Pluto. Okay. Pluto, I think Pluto gets a little bit of a bad rap, but Pluto's energy is transformative. It is, it is something you likely feel or that you notice. And so with that in mind, be aware of any um, emotions that come up that might run away with you a little bit and try to avoid extreme arguments. So like if you feel really strongly about something and you can feel like, and maybe Madeline could talk to the Mars influence here. I feel like there's something that's activating you instead of lashing out at someone or feeling like you have to prove that you're right or say something about it. it think about it as an inner process to come, to come within and, and create a, a dialogue with yourself of reflection around what's coming up and why it's coming up and a course of action that could be transformative, Pluto, for your relationships between yourself and those around you. So um, kind of a couple action steps. Look at look at what was happening last year on November 13th, 2023, when we had the Scorpio new moon, because you'll likely see some culminations and be aware of just some deep emotions that might surface right now with the Scorpio new moon that's happening next week. Um, and I think that's pretty much it as far as I have is in around that the Scorpio new moon energy. And, you know, the one thing that really jumped out at me was the the Pluto square because you know it was square the moon and square the sun and so there's a, that's a significant um that feels like a very significant energy for people to be to be aware of you know squares create that tension they you know we may not like it we may not want it but it's something that we need so uh madeline take it away let's jump in on this one interesting very interesting time this <clears throat> yep, because Pluto is the ruler of this full moon, but so is Mars. And, you know, we have so much happening in, Mar in Aries, which is ruled by Mars still. And we have um, this Pluto is currently in the degree point of where the great Saturn conjunction happened in 2020, 2021. I'm sorry, 2020, December 21. So, so, and now we, like you're saying, we've got the square here and uh, this is a Mars ruled full moon. So it's going to be action-based. It's going to be, and, and Mars is, 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 is out of combustion with Saturn now, which means it's energies are no longer repressed or um, being held back. Um, so we're kind of opening up here into an action energy of movement and you know the eclipse was ruled by mars and it was with saturn so it was a sort of delaying that's why a lot of people haven't felt some of these transits or some of these transitions yet that that eclipse is going to bring and we also have at the same time as you mentioned the jupiter uranus conjunction which is absolutely very much still happening during this full moon so I'll, 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 I'll put this story together for you all. So with the Pluto position there at the zero degrees, what we're looking at is anyone or any trajectory that we've been on that is not aligned with the Jupiter, your uh, Saturn conjunction and Jupiter, Saturn, Jupiter is your calling Saturn career coming together. So we are all in the age of Aquarius stepping up to our true astrological chart, which is our true calling our Dharma. And, um, so this full moon brings us into what I call um, 
oppositional action. Why is it oppositional? Because you say there's a square and oppositional means our ego, this is more of the same theme of the eclipse, where our mind in some level, now this involves the moon. So it's emotional, it's a full moon. So there would be an emotional, and I think I remember you mentioning there was an emotional component that you were feeling about this whole thing. So there's an emotional attachment, fear-based, that's Pluto, where we don't believe in, in God or our higher selves, or we don't believe in the universe protecting us. So some people may find this hard because there may be some emotional attachment to things that we need to release. You could you could you could use the uh, analogy of a baby with the uh, pacifier. The pacifier must be taken away now, <laughs> and the baby does not like it. And you have to go through a good long time where the baby cries without the pacifier. But now the baby is no longer dependent on a external thing for security, and they find internal security, and that's what this is all about. We're finding a divine. Uh, st stabilization so we're so we're we're developing more we're, we're trusting more we're letting go and we're trusting in this full moon and we're taking actions in alignment opposite than what we feel but but not for everybody probably Scorpio are going to feel it more and and also this is happening during the Uranus Jupiter conjunction so it's going to be hard for anyone to know if it's the full moon or if it's Uranus Jupiter <laughs> unless you look at your chart but there's an emotional fear-based. This is almost the, the other part of the eclipse that didn't get done. In other words, the other eclipse, the Aries eclipse on April 8th was our, our ego. Now this full moon in Scorpio is going to transform, transformation, the emotional out of alignment and emotional attachments, fear-based attachments to what we think or, or, and again, this is an emotional energy that we have an emotional dependence on that we feel emotionally is our is our security because because very much Scorpio is the energy of 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 not on a subconscious level, not believing in a God or the universe or our protection or our safety. And um, so, you know, in, a, in an eighth heart, in an eighth in the eighth house in someone's chart, which is the house of Pluto, if you see planets there, like, for instance, you see Venus in, in your eighth house that person is going to make their uh, subconsciously, their spouse, their God. They're gonna make their salvation. If you have Jupiter in your ninth, in your in your eighth house, you make some form of religion your God or, or some form of um, other spiritual thing or some, or you don't really believe in the universe protecting you and say, and, and all of us have that on some level. So in this, in this full moon, Uh, something comes into, shall we say, uh, materialization, but again, this is action-based. We're going to look at both houses ruled by Mars in this uh, report, and, and it's 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 the action that takes us to the new direction, and 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 it does involve releasing something emotionally that we have been somewhat leaning on, which is part of this whole theme. It's it's happening throughout the month anyway. Um, we have to go forward to a new future here that we leave things behind. And, you know, Pluto is, a, and, and Scorpio is is death and, and rebirth. So there can be people leaving during this time in our family, you know, it happens as part of life. Um, and then we have this, there's a rebirth in, in our life too, from all of this. So there's going to be a rebirth on the other side of this. And to go ahead, have an emotional, emotions are not bad. And Scorpio is very deep emotions, very, and emotions that are hidden in your subconscious. Scorpio rules everything that is not seen. It is it is the underworld. So there could be some buried stuff coming up for transformation um, that this full moon will uh, will basically put us through by removal. But then we have a then we have a rebirth, and we and we and we and then a new, there's a new birth, there's a new empowerment. Pluto is about our power, our our being empowered. So whatever we're releasing was not was not our like 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 a baby with a pacifier. The baby is not fully in his own center of emotional stability. In other words, doing it for himself or doing it for yourself. So in other words, this this full moon and Pluto in, in this Pluto full moon annihilates a fear that is stopping us from being fully in our power. So whatever, on the other side of this full moon, we are stepping into a much more empowered situation. For instance, if you have Scorpio over your seventh house, you're going to be pulling your power back 
from a relationship. You're going to stop giving. But again, it might be that the relationship acts, behaves in a way that you have to pull your power back. So there could be some kind of an upset in that relationship. But ultimately, the other side of this is better. The transformation, the birth that, that we become on the other side of this, releasing an attachment um, is empowering. It, it puts us back into our divine power. That's that's the point, because we're not of much use on the on the, shall we say, our dharmic path. If we're if we're not um, stepping forward boldly in our Mars energy towards towards the destiny, if we're being held back by an emotional fear or or codependency or an emotional fear based attachment to something. Um, so that will be rattled out of our subconscious, out of our psyche body. So Scorpio full moons can be can be upsetting because you're going to meet a fear. You, you can you can you can come face to face with some kind of a fear that you then discover is irrational but the fear sometimes plays out so you can see that it's irrational um now <laughs> i understand why some people might go through tremendous fear around this full moon because well, i should say tremendous fear but a, i don't mean to exaggerate but a little bit of a shake up inside your psyche because of this because of the uranian jupiter conjunction here so not only are we connecting with some fear-based, trauma-based attachments that take us out of our power in this Pluto square that is stopping us from stepping into our full empowered destiny, which is to all collectively come together and step into our true purpose, which many people fear will not sustain, but we will see in this full moon will sustain um, because full, Pluto is the planet of the riches in Vedic, which can be sudden. And by the way, this is a very abundant potential sudden financial windfall for many people. So some financial fears might be completely eliminated for many people. I mean, we are stepping into much more abundant times financially. We're coming out of a rough chapter money-wise, and we're entering into a better better financial future, better financial chapter. So, hey, Madeline, really quick. quick. Really quickly, I want yeah. to ask you a question about that. So, because I know yeah. this is a huge theme coming up for many of my clients around the money okay. abundance. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about how this, the Jupiter Uranus conjunction is, could be potentially be really positive yeah. for a lot of people in a financial regard. Mm -hmm. Do you have a uh, kind of a, a, a framework or a guideline of specific signs and, and specific degrees that people can look at? So if they have... Like, sure. What what can people look at to to see if that that, that will positively affect them? Yep. Um, of course, any planets you have around 21, uh, 19, 20, 21, 22, or 18 degrees of a fixed sign, uh, you're going to get a square to this. So you're going to feel it very much. Your life really will change. There really will be it. And it's possible there's a crisis, but um, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm thinking it looks pretty darn good for... Um, a square in this. Um, if you have planets in Capricorn at that degree point, fabulous, amazing. It's a trine or in Virgo. Um, it's a trine as big grand earth trine. That would be very powerful. If you have that, oh my gosh, you're really in for a good, a good surprise. Because this energy of your eyes is surprising. It's it's out of the blue. You don't expect it on some level. You, you your, your your life will most people's lives will take a whole new turn during these energies. Um, I've I've been seeing it in my readings. People are just either quitting jobs and new things coming in, or just a lot of liberating from situations that have felt very stagnant and deaf. I mean, you know, that's that Pluto energy, that Scorpio energy, something that's yeah. deaf and not live anymore that needs to just go like rotting. It's a, a part of in our life. That's like, it's just, it's just no longer really moving and growing anymore. And so it needs to be, we need to sort of move away from there and, and, and do the new growth, the new, the new birth. And so, um, um, Trines and sextiles to this fabulous, and even a square is might be okay. Now, worst case scenario, there's a crisis in this. It can be a square, it, it, but um, it's again something that has been. If there is some sort of crisis, like I've had a square, I had a Scorpio square <laughs> to my Saturn, and um, a debt completely was erased. So um, I got money from a land sale. So it's like, it, it can be very, very positive. Um, so the most important thing is to have faith and trust on the other side of anything that's going on during this 
and know that you're just being re redirected, course corrected, things need to change, something needs, something needs to change, something needs to be gone so that so that your abundance can come through. Um, and sometimes that does have to come through the discomfort of a crisis in order to move you. You know, I mean, a lot of the people that I work with, they've come to a point where um, not 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 all, but many where they're like, I don't know what else to do. I, I'm really at my at my wits end. Um, and it's we, like the darkest before the dawn. Yes. Yeah. It, and it's like and I, I find it so funny with human nature that we need to be battered about before we actually do something. We we don't just like we know it. We know the things we need to do, but we often don't until we absolutely have to. And at that point, we're pretty yep. beaten up. Yep. So, so I don't know why you think so hard. This is exactly what happened to me in my Scorpio full uh, eclipse, actually, my fifth house. My ex-husband um, was late on some taxes. It wasn't a lot. It was like $1,000 or something. And they, um, and it wasn't fair. It, we had paid it. It was from a, a 2016. So it was like really weird. It came out and they- wow. They, sh they shut my account down in California or they took it all out of my account or whatever. And I had to change my account because I didn't want to deal with that account anymore. So yeah. it forced me to open up an account in the town that I'm living. And oh my God, that was crazy. I should have done it years. I, I should have done it right, right away because I was always having to drive down to Coeur d'Alene. It was just ridiculous. So it was like that, that, that full moon or eclipse, I can't made me do it. Yep. Lovely. And it was a fear. I don't know why I had a fear to change my account here. I don't know what, what that well, was Well, maybe, about. It, you know, it could be too. It's like once you do something like that, what, you're planting roots somewhere. Yeah. And that right. in and of itself can be really scary for you're people. hitting it right on the nail because I was, wasn't was sure that I was going to stay here at all. I wasn't quite stay. I was, and so the universe said, no, you're staying. So you're going to yes. change everything. And oh my gosh, I can't tell you how it's like right across the street. I just do everything. I just bounce back and forth. And I'm like, why didn't I do that right away? <laughs> so, well, so this is great. So, so people can, I guess the, the message I would love for people to take away is even if something does happen in your life that feels really challenging or that looks on the surface, I mean, anytime any of us get something from the IRS, I think there's a moment of like, oh my gosh, it was like, so, yeah. So just take, take a, take a beat take a minute, take a breath and know that whatever is happening, yeah. even if it feels really, really, really scary, that it's moving you towards something better, something it's that, for a reason. yes. Yep. And Absolutely. with Jupiter involved, it's going to be expansive, you mm -hmm. know, for sure. Yep. 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 I mean, the only warning would be to not with Jupiter, this is a Mars world. And um, it's not making any exact aspect. Well, actually, I take that back. Mars is sextiling. Look at this. Mars is sextiling uh, kind of at a wider, but it's there. And that's a nice energy. So you want to flow. It's in water. Mars is water. So we want to flow intuitive. Step into our intuition. Yeah. Uh, earth sign is very intuitive. I'm telling you, these earth people are super intuitive. <laughs> uh, my dad is a my dad is like Gemini and Aquarius rising and he has a moon in Taurus and he's so mental, so mental, but then he pops into that into that that really intuitive and I'm like, Daddy, you're super intuitive. You don't want to <laughs> anyway. So, yeah. So we're gonna be we wanna flow, water, flow, earth, intuitive, ride this change through the intuitive, seeing what's opening up you know, where to, where to, where to move to get out of the way or, you know, but that's a positive and that's nice that Mars is sextiling all of this during this full moon, because it is being ruled. So in other words, something, that's the thing you see, you know, I know something really interesting when that happened on my, when I had to change banks, when I got to the other bank, I had a new account. They gave me all this credit. Like it was like the sextile, the door was wide open. It was the best bank and it was everything. Like they gave me this credit card for this zero interest credit. It was like all this stuff came. <laughs> it couldn't have been any more yeah, it was of a like gift, a, you know? Yeah. So I was just like, wow. So there's a sextile. So remember when there's a square, usually some kind of a block or door gets shut. And then the sextile is where the door is open. So the more you are out of the focus on what isn't happening and more focusing on looking for that sex out. Where's the open door? Because that's where you're supposed to go. And you will be uh, universally supported through that sex top. You know, and again, it does involve action. Sometimes sex styles, people don't, don't do stuff and they're a bit lazy and they don't act. But with a Mars sex style, I think there's a flow in action, a, a little bit of a intuitive 
not even like you're not even really aware that you're just kind of wandering somewhere and then you do it or you just kind of feel an intuitive to push to go somewhere and you do it you listen to that right now um and then there's a door that opens for you and you're like whoa that's great this is where i'm supposed to go um so these these uh you know astrology is doing better for us what we can do for ourselves and um it wants us well we're collectively evolving to a whole new era and um so we're, we're you know if we don't align with that we're going to be aligned with that in these energies exactly so let's let's flow with that and yeah. see what aries has in store all right let me get to that put aries on the first house here which way am i going to go let's see um Darn it. What's going on here? Okay. Sorry. Let me just get So while that. Madeline is doing that, I want to give, I want to just give a little plug to Madeline and um, have people go check out her new and improved website. Soul levels. Isn't it soul levels.com? Yeah. So levels.com. Yeah. yeah. And it has my name there as well. So you can use my name or soul levels.com, but yeah. thank you. Amalia. So go, yeah, it. please, please do check it out. It makes it super simple to set up an appointment and to get information. And it's uh it's really great. I'm just super excited for her because it's something that she's been been putting out there for a while. Like this is something she really wanted to do and desired. And now it's here and it's phenomenal. And I'm just so, so proud of her and so excited for her. So go check it out. Thank you, Amalia. I'll put the link on the bottom for everyone if they want it. Thanks. Thanks, okay. Amalia. Appreciate yeah, you're welcome. Um, yeah. So Aries, I mean, what are we going to say about Aries? Oh my gosh. I mean, have an eclipse in your first house with this full moon Scorpio. So where is that going to be? That's going to be in your eighth house, right? Oh, wow. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So that's a relationship. That, that's joint resources, joint partnership resources. Could be that you suddenly get a loan. You, you get, uh, this is a windfall energy, you know? Uh, this could be money coming in, an inheritance. Someone passes away, you get an inheritance. Um, um, big fear this is a big uh, full moon in your eighth house could rattle you to your bones around money and then you're going to discover you didn't need to be afraid so something could come up that triggers you there's a deep fear could get triggered but it's to heal it it's to pull it out it's to get it out of your psyche body release it out of your energy field um and it might be it might be what spurs you because this is a full moon that spurs you, that makes you take action. Like I took action to go to the bank, right? So it spurs you to either step into a relationship and, and joint resources to or to take on some kind of investment. Like I just, somebody I was doing a reading for in her husband's chart, her husband's house or in the seventh house was all these massive changing and he was thinking of investing. He must be Aries. So you take or you start an investment, which then liberates you, because remember, this is all happening. Uh, Uranus and Jupiter are in the picture. So a lot of these things take you to take action, which then liberates you financially, because maybe the Jupiter conjunction Uranus is happening, but you're not taking the action to open that door for it to come in. But maybe it's going to open that door to come in through this full moon in Scorpio through your eighth house by joint resources, investing in property, real estate, or some form of investment that you initiate, which will do very well for the long haul, or an investment comes in. Maybe this Jupiter Uranus isn't as scary as we all think in the, in the mass market world. And some investment really does kind of, kind of go boom for you. Um, but also we got to look at the relationship, maybe ending, ending, a joint resourcing with someone that is straining your finances for maybe you have a joint, maybe you have an investment that is good, that isn't working and you get rid of it, but then that frees you up for a better investment um, or a relationship falls apart and you, and you sever your joint resources, but now you're not wasting your money in a situation that isn't working out with someone. And, you know, it, sometimes in other part of your chart, you're ending your relationship. So now you're ending your joint resources and suddenly you have more resources for yourself or something to invest. But um, eighth house is 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 not easy. I'm going to say you're going to get rattled and you and it may be what spurs you to take on some sort of financial venture, which then liberates you, which then eliminates that concern. What did you get? OK, so we have the red bird of paradise. Hopefully everyone can see that. 
mm. for Aries. And this, this flower really reminds me, it's almost like a, like an italics or a bold to Aries energy. So it's reminding Aries who they really are. So the, the message is focus, get it done. So Aries are really good at that unless they're in a place of fear or doubt or worry or concern or, um, which will come up. Well, exactly. Sure. <laughs> yes. So it, this, yeah. this feels like a reminder to, for Aries to uh, harness their passion, access that motivation that lies within them and move forward on things that they do feel passionate about. It's interesting. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think this is the full moon, which really spurs Aries to take action. Yeah. Which I happen to know some that might step into action about something important. Oh, yes. I think I know who you mean. And yeah, we'll find, we will, we shall uh, see. I'll pull a card on that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, Taurus, well, you know, this is going to be interesting because that, you know, um, well, you've got this full moon in your seventh house. So first of all, you got the Uranus Jupiter conjunction in your first house. So, you know, that's a wild card. Your life's about to change in a radical way and liberating you and Taurans are very stable, non really up and at it type people. They tend to be very reserved in their actions. So this may change really radically for Taurans. They may be spurred into some sort of new direction in their life that is everybody will go wow wow they really changed <laughs> you know they really they're really going a new way they're being more liberated more free more more okay to not be so stuck in their ways so so they're going to be more risk taking that's the other thing about a scorpio i forgot to add this about the scorpio full moon we're going to be taking more risks because that once that fear is eliminated and you go through that purging you know, we could be experiencing a lot of purging of fears, but once that risk is gone, that fear is gone, there's more uh, faith in risk. And the eighth house says you take risks. It will work out. I I can guarantee that because I've done that. So take you, I say astrologically guided risks, um, intelligent risks, emotionally, intuitively aligned risks. So, um, so Taurans are going to become completely uh, liberated, completely different risk-taking. Now a full moon in their relationship can end or bring, or bring a co-creative project with, with partnership. Now, if you're in the wrong relationship, like you mess, like you mentioned uh, in these energies, bye-bye most likely. Um, but that's better because then you have space for your right person and they have space and now are opened up for their right person. So that's what we want. We want to be with our right person as painful and, and, and crisis that it could be to go through. Um, so, so a transformation also in your person of relationship, because if you have something happening, something really good could happen to your person to, in your, in your relationship, something is in major fruition with them. Um, and it's very abundant with these energies. So something very abundant could happen to your person. What do you get? Well, we have the Royal Poinciana and we've got some similar colors so far here showing up in the flowers. And okay. So again, with this, this, this is, this to me feels like this, this energy of, of expansion, you know, with this flower, there's a, there's a focused energy here. It feels kind of creative and um, pure in a way and connected to your um, like your solar plexus or your or your uh, sacral chakra. It's like it's that it's that place of of birthing something new in your life. Um, but it's got this expansive energy, which might be the Jupiter Uranus. But there's the surprise that comes in. There's a little bit wow. of a surprise. Um, and the, the message Especially of all people. Taurus. That would, yes, <laughs> exactly. Um, and but this, this activates your convictions. So maybe in a relationship, it's important for you to ask for what you want in order to see if the relationship is sustainable or you can find a way through, or if you do ask for what you want and the other person is adamantly opposed, is not willing to to come to the table to meet you, then that's pretty clear. So whatever that might be for you, um, yeah, it just, it feels like a, a lot of surprise. There's some surprises. Like Taurus will be surprised. Yeah. 
they might even be surprised by how they engage with this energy, how they respond to it and what they do within, within their relationships and within their life. I don't think it's just relationships. This feels even bigger than that. So, oh yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, you know, um, that picture really stimulates or brings to my mind a breaking out of that stuck fear, you know, yeah. kind of like, like going, I'm done. Like, I bet you many Taurus have been like, are, are in a situation because what happens with Taurus is they get a little bit bored. They create so much stability and they get kind of bored. And then all of a sudden you're going to see Taurus just go I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I quit. You could suddenly quit a job, move, bust out, go traveling. Just suddenly you're just going to break free from yeah. the Taurus are just the most non like that people. But that may emerge right now. I mean, yeah. some pretty oh, significant think, energy on them. Yeah, so. I think it's not. It's bigger than a May. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, one of my, one of my sons is a Taurus son, and I'm excited for him at the potential of this busting out and doing something new. And you know, I'm, I'm excited to see where that invitation comes from for him, and what yeah. might be inspiring for him to to explore and to look at something new and different. Yeah. I'm going to be really watching all the Torrens I know. I'm going to be like spying on them and they're <laughs> <laughs> glued to the, yeah, glued to their social know, media or whatever. Totally different after this, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's so funny. All right. What about Gemini? Gemini, Gemini. All righty, righty, righty. Gemini's. Oh, oh gosh. I'm, I'm like, Okay, so Gemini, you guys have Mars. You know, I want to look at your both houses ruled by Mars. So, so you have your Aries house is the eleventh house, which is awesome, awesome. Then you're going to have Pluto in your ninth, and you're going to have um, Scorpio in your boop, boop, boom. Uh, for uh, where is Scorpio? Where, where six? Where does? Thank. You. Thank you six house there it is uh so yeah interesting um so health issues could come up that need to be um let me look at the taurus house oh 12th house wow interesting gemini well basically release of a karmic fear that's causing stress or, or issues in your health um because, you know, there's there's going to be some sort of trauma, past life trauma. This is that's the other thing you got to remember about the Scorpio energy is it's past life trauma and it's trauma. So so we're going to be. And with that Chiron, everything happening in your 11th house, which is really for fortune, uh, good fortune. Um, and then we've got this full moon in your 12th house. So it's almost like the life of the Gemini is going to expand to to a place that meets the wall of their trauma that that would block it so it, and the universe is going forward you don't have a choice so you're going to deal with a past life trauma that that has been the source of an illness which will now be healed and released and will be transformed into healed so it can play out in the in in, in either quitting an addiction um starting a health routine starting to exercise remember this is very transformative you will be transformed by this so Let's say you haven't been working out. Now you start doing muscles. Remember Mars, you're going to start working out and build muscle mass and build, get your health going proactive. And then people are going to look at you and go, whoa, you've completely transformed. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and so, yeah, because you've got Taurus, you're going to have this, the sun is in your 12th. So uh, this is going to be a time of introspection, a little bit of introverted period, because you're going to have the sun in your first house soon. So usually when we have our, our solar return coming up, we, we tend to be a little bit more introvert and go quiet and into ourselves for a while. So we reconnect before we go active mode in that first house. And so basically, Gemini are, are um, finding a healing um, practice and new way. And also they're going to stop living a way that causes stress in their life. They're waking up to this, to this fear-based pattern where they live in a way that creates stress. So something could open up for them that they, that they have some sort of 
awakening around and they now operate in a way or they change their career, depending what else is going on, because I think that Saturn is in your 10th house. Um, because this is very karmic for them because they've got Jupiter and Uranus in their 12th house. So it's like you're you're setting yourself free from a karmic purging, a karmic fear or trauma that has been causing illness in your life or frustration or fear-based energies that cause you to operate in a stressful way. Well, so here we go, Gemini. The pink primrose message is fearless readiness. Wow. So I, I feel like it's a great summary of what you were just saying mm -hmm. and it activates rapid growth and the messages make it effortless. So anytime it feels to me like anytime Gemini are kind of going back and forth and waffling, it's like, just be in the, in the flow of it, be in the ease of it, know that you're ready for whatever it is. And, um, it doesn't have to be hard. Just let it, yeah. let it flow. So the pink primrose for Gemini. Yes. And the Mars sex styling, uh, Jupiter in your 12th house, <clears throat> this is a career. Um, I think it's, you know what? Interesting. I really do think that Gemini's are going to operate now in a career because they're going to do very well with that clips in their 11th that they get to now sort of take the gas off the pedal as it were from a fear-based energy and just sort of flow water flow because they have they have pisces over their 10th house so most gemini's are, are here to learn how to really just flow in their career and not have stress not operate from a stress base yeah yeah which nice. they often do because i know them they do that okay <laughs> all right uh cancer okay cancer woohoo all right, Cancer, you guys, first of all, it's very exciting for Cancer because you're having this, uh, you have this uh, Taurus, Jupiter, Uranus conjunction in your 11th house, which is lucky gains and notoriety or wins. And plus you've had the eclipses in your 10th house of career. So really good for career, really great, all of that um, openings. And then you've got this thing, the Scorpio is in your fifth house. And most cancer people I know are not in relationships. You'd be surprised. I, most of them are not. Some are, but most cancers have been single for a long time because they've had Pluto in their seventh house of relationships transforming their codependency issues and their fear-based attachments to relationships and where they make their relationship their salvation. Interesting. <laughs> so, so, that's, yes, hello. so that's fixed or on the other way, on the other side of that. To, yeah. to, to, and so now we've got this, this, this full moon in your fifth house of relationships. So what else is there next for cancer? Well, a relationship, a new relationship or a new friendship comes in uh, that, that you, it's that this, the fifth house is collaborative. It's entrepreneurial. Um, it's, um, it is uh, also pregnancy, creative. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, creative outlet um creative self-expression or both you could you could collaborate with a friend in a creative project you could you could meet a relationship have a new relationship get pregnant you could have a new relationship friendship comes in. well hopefully you don't get pregnant that fast sorry i didn't mean like right away but uh, <laughs> it's probably good you clarify although, you know what if you meet a person and you have a one night stand do not sleep with them because you might get pregnant <laughs> yeah or you know, the, be careful yeah the fifth house is sort of like uh, surface type relationships that sometimes don't last long or just sort of, you know, but it can be a relationship friend turns into a full on relationship. Um, so, um, yeah, so Scorpio for cancer in their fifth house is kind of like, um, a full moon there is, um, well, if we think about the new moon, when was that new moon? It was in 2023. Oh. Yeah, November uh, 23rd, 2020. No, hold on. Let me go back to my notes. It was, I want to be accurate. November 13th, 2023. Well, something again started their creativity or a new person. You could have met a friend then. You could have made a, a, a new friend at that point. Now, now it turns into either a relationship or it turns into a collaborative um, but yeah, pretty much creative project. It's, it's in your Dharma It's part of your destiny. Um, let's look at what else the, I mean, I'm really kind of there. I think I've really, well, you've got Pluto in your 
her eighth house, by the way. Uh, so the next sort of big work uh, for cancer is that eighth house Pluto transiting, which is to conquer your fears around financial stability, which is one of the reasons cancer tend to be a little bit attached to relationships because, you know, that's eighth and seventh houses are your relationship houses. So they're going to have, a, you want to really relax and have faith in the financing of your life. Trust. Don't try not to be penny pinchy. Cancers can be like that. <laughs> so in other words, have faith about money, trust. Don't worry, create the flow. Let it trust in the divine and your abundance. You'll be fine. Um, so I think that's it. Okay. Well, we have the wild hawk weed for cancer. Again, this we're kind of going back to the same color theme. Interesting. For... Look, it's two flowers. And then the third flower is the uh is the creative project Could with be. the pumpkin. Yeah, it could be this, the wild talk we activates wholeness. The message is fall in love with yourself. And what strikes me about this is where you started the, the, the sharing about cancer and about how they can be, they've not been in relationships for a while. They can be a little bit codependent. You know, to me, this is almost a nod that, that any, uh, anyone who has cancer in their chart in a significant way, they're ready for a relationship. That they've they've done the deep inner work of bring, coming back to themselves. They know who they are and they're ready. Um, it magnifies self sufficiency, which I think goes back to what you were talking about with money. You know, feeling like you have the the financial wherewithal and the resources to take care of yourself. So I really love the wild hawkweed for cancer. Yeah, and I can't help but noticing how one flower is receptive and the other one is it's yin and yang. Yeah, a bit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like you don't see the outside of that flower. You just see the light penetrating. And the other one, you see more of the red around it and the receiving of that. So it's like putting the two parts together, creating a whole and, and the create. And then once you put the yin and the yang together, it creates an expansive third element. So that's exciting. It is very exciting. Very exciting. I love that. All very right. Exciting. So to Leo, another fire, you fire people. Fire people. Yeah, let's get to Leo. Come on. Okay, so you're going to have Scorpio in your fourth. Wow. Where's your Leo? Oh, it's your MC's Leo. Yeah, um, and my son. So it's both. Oh, well, there. So now we get this real estate property thing. I mean, family, full moon, living together. Um, let's look at the Aries eclipse was in your ninth house. Um, and then we get this Mars and all of this in your eighth Mars is in your eighth. Wow. So, you know, you're looking at joint resources. It's very possible that you joint resources, you sell a property, get money for a property, joint pull resources together to afford a property. Uh, this is a big, uh, a fruition of something coming in your living situation, family situation, um, um, full moon in the fourth. What else? Um, you know, it's, it's all about your heritage, your, 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 your living and your, and your roots. And so I would say this is a very grounding rooted full moon where you become, where you have a new way, a new place to live that, that is, is stabilizing because one of the most important things when you study astrology that really, really, um, is important for our MC, which is our destiny, which is our success or our career, is to have a stable fourth house. So this is a stabilizing fourth house, living situation, settling in a situation um, or selling, becoming, and with Mars in that eighth house, you, you have a windfall of money coming in over selling a piece of property or investing in a piece of property. Um, let me just take one more look um oh wow well you've got that taurus uranus in your 10th house so career you know this is going to be related to that maybe oh let me just see wow so you know it's sextiling your eighth house you could have a windfall a financial windfall absolutely coming in in some some from some investment or joint resources or through your spouse or through your partner or through an investment or through a property selling at a property the fourth house you know, real estate has been a little bit on the repressive side lately. So I think that's going to change here with this transit. I think we're going to get it back to the real estate because I think it's lower than it really reality. And I think we're going to go back to where it really is, which is at a stronger place. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and, you know, a big shocking change in your career. 
You could suddenly become known. You're, you've got that MC Leo. And well, you've got your, your son is in your 10th house, isn't it? Um, ah. Cusp, ninth and 10th. Yeah. Ah, you're going to suddenly become known, seen. Yeah. All this it's, hard work you've been doing, uh, you know, YouTube channels and stuff like that, they take a while. I mean, I've been, and as you can tell, we've been doing this a while, but you're going to start seeing it. Yeah, I, I, I feel confident that that's happening. It's, it's, you know, it always is slower than and most of us like, you know, we like to see things happen, typically happen rapidly. And it's been a little bit slow. And I've had Saturn in my fourth house for quite a long time now. So it's been slow going. Uh, so, but I'm excited about this. And the, yeah. the message, the message is abundantly clear there for Leo's. And it might not be what you think, because I feel like what's been happening um, in general, and Leo in the fourth to me also is a, a reminder of the of the ancestral component and all of the work that our ancestors did in order for us to be where we are. Um, and and also some of the detriment that they did, some of the some of the ancestral uh, patterning that yes. we're breaking free from. Thank like, you for thank you for mentioning that too. Yeah. So the two cards came flying out of the deck, and I, what I find interesting is they both have a very similar message with a slightly different flavor. So we have the rhododendron, which activates mm -hmm. compassion, and the message is be kind to yourself. And we have the rose, which activates tenderness, and the message is nurture yourself. So you know, perhaps the, some Leos out there have not been taking care of themselves enough. They've been focused outwardly more mm -hmm. very, you know, Leo's are very heart forward, heart centered. Um, and so now it's time to really turn that back to, to yourself and take some time to be kind to yourself, be kind to others, continue to do that, but also be kind to yourself. And I, I also feel like this energy of, of not necessarily slow down, but just, uh, relax a little bit, just be with yourself, take care of yourself. Um, that, I mean, that feels very abundantly clear with these two cards coming out for Leo. Um, you know, and maybe that's part of that Taurus Uranus energy too, of, um, it's almost like, you know, if this is going to activate something in Leo's career, maybe now's the time to do some things to prepare yourself for the crazy busy that might come or all of the action that might need to be taken where you can, you, you're, you're feeling solid, you're feeling ready for whatever that is. And you've taken some time for yourself. Yeah. Well, I think those are very interesting because again, we've got the outward flower, which is, you know, all outward. And then we kind of have this inward thing. This, that other flower is more from the intuitive, the center. And so oftentimes uh, we, especially with the MC there, uh, this can be where we're in our head space about something mm -hmm. and now we're flipping it and we're going and coming from an intuitive center. And then cool. there's this big success. Yeah. I love that. I think that's a great message for everybody yeah. to, you know, to really start to focus in and then out. I know one of my intentions every morning when I make my cacao and I connect in with, with mm -hmm. different energies is to ask for the, the uh, connection and the balance between the inner and the outer in order yes. to express and share whatever my, my gift is to the world for that particular day, you know, whatever that is. And I feel like the, you know, making sure those two are, are in sync is so right. important. Yep. And so now it's like, oftentimes, <clears throat> because we've, we we're in a world that's very mental. Yes. That, that, that we go that way, but but we're going to flip it. And then and so we go mental and then we act and then we kind of have emotions around it or intuitively have some sort of confusion around it. But really if we flip it, we go intuitive first and then act and then use the mental to support the intuitive. Then you flip that and it's taking aligned action to the intuitive. Yeah. So intuitive action, mental. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. okay. Mercury, speaking of mental third house, <laughs> uh, Mercury, the mercurial maniacs. <laughs> I I love Virgo. Very important to have Virgo around. Very important to always have Virgo in 
in your life because they'll always pick up things. A lot of people don't like it and they go, oh, they're so critical, but they're usually right. And it's good to know. Good to know these little detailed things that people like me that have no Virgo in their chart miss. <laughs> All right. So let's take a look for Virgo. You guys have Scorpio in your third house. Wow. Virgo's communication. This is third house. <clears throat> I mean, they're ruled by Mercury. That Mercury is a third house energy, which is all about the mind and the thinking and the internal communication and the internal mind. And um, I would say Virgo. So one of the things that Virgo have to work on is a positive internal dialogue, not self-critical, not trying to be perfect. Um, uh, they kind of pull themselves apart. And um, and so now in this it's it's fear based thinking that that, you know, uh, <laughs> because they're so detailed, precise oriented that they, that if they miss something or, you know, they're not perfect. So then they're going to be negative about it. So so this is a transformative, big transformation for uh, Virgo in their mind space, in their thinking pattern and communication. And uh, Mars is uh, your Aries house is your eighth house. So. Um, break breaking through the fears of communicating a truth, breaking through the fear of not speaking who you truly are. Um, um, and, and now, now they, they, many Virgos could be very well coming into relationships right now because they have that eclipse in their, in their eighth house, joint resources is coming up. They've got Jupiter Uranus in their ninth. They're going to have a complete, they could suddenly start traveling or a complete change of belief an awakening, a big awakening around, around the fear-based causes, the fear-based issues that have caused them to not communicate their truth. It's a form of manipulation to not speak the truth. It's a controlling thing. So it's like this fear that causes them to, to, to try to hold on to relationships through fear-based non-communications being not speaking their truth. Um, we're going to get some kind of breaking through that and breaking through a fear and speaking a truth, revealing a truth. Now it doesn't have to be negative. It can be that you're in love with somebody and you've never told them. And that, and you just are too afraid to tell them. And so now that's a form of control. And um, so we're releasing controlled fear-based ways of operating and communication. Now communication could come in. You could get communication from someone else, a relationship, something else is going on in your chart. Well, that Aries, over the eighth so there may be communication from a past relationship or or a new relationship and you and you start opening up the dialogue dialogue is opening up or the other thing it could be a business or that communication you co-create you have areas in your eighth house you you co co-finance or you come into an investment you run a business together you start a business together and you have financing you pull your finances together start a business go ahead um i love what you were saying about that madeleine and the okay the um talking about truth you know mm -hmm. finding that truth and so the the flower for virgo is the pink lotus love that and this has a lot to do with truth but going looking within to find the divine wisdom that you carry and virgos are you know one of the, the archetypes is the is the maiden or the goddess or the virgin yeah. and so it's you know there is you know when you think about a, a goddess you feel like she's got it pretty together like she, she knows who she is. She carries herself in that way. So, you know, maybe Virgos can think of themselves that way. And if you're a male, same thing. It's like finding that, that wisdom that you carry within, um, spiritual insight and understanding can also come during this time. And Scorpio has, is very much about spiritual insight. It's a very deep watery, mm -hmm sign that that allows you to get into some of those dark corners and crevices of your inner world in order to see the truth that exists there and be able to um, navigate your life from that place it's not always easy but it's definitely valuable so um and then the the, the lotus is one of those flowers that starts in the in the depths of the mud and the muck and the ick and then finds its way to the surface to become this beautiful blossoming flower. So another piece of that to remember too, for this period of time for Virgos. Yeah. I mean, that flower really looks like the center of truth coming out through the center. <laughs> yeah, it really does. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's beautiful. Yeah, it's a beautiful, it's one of my favorite ones. Um, and I just popped over to YouTube to check out and see if anyone's commenting. And there was a, a compliment for your website from Jackie. She said it was beautiful. So I just hey, wanted Jackie. to let you know, Madeline, in case you don't see it. So I yeah. ask questions. If anybody has questions, pop them out. Yeah, I'm 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 going over every now and then just to see what's what. So yeah, please do. Please do share if there's something that really resonates with you or if there's a flower that you really love or, you know, and just because these flowers are for specific signs, it doesn't mean they they're not helpful to you. So if you're watching this and you feel a calling towards a flower, there's probably some essence of it that would be supportive for you right now. So trust trust your own instincts and intuition when it comes to that. Um okay, Libra Okay, Libra. <clears throat> um, well, you still got the south node in your first house, so you really are becoming more of a um, non-Libra Libra. <laughs> you're, you're letting go of some of that um, getting along, going along, get along energy. And um, you've got that eclipse in your in your relationship house, so something very major is going on in your relationships. We all, I know some Libras who are splitting up with people. Um, and, um, or your person in your relationship, if it's established relationship, something really big and fabulous is happening to them. Um, now Scorpio for Libra is in your 12th house. Um, sorry, no, is your, is your, is your second house. So, wow. I like that. So, um, full moon in your second house, uh, uh, inheritance, um, uh, you can a talent, a gift, you money, uh, uh, some way of, uh, in other words, a way of income comes in a new way of income. Um, a, a, a new job could be a full moon in your second house. Um, but also second house is talent is, is, um, creative abilities. So you could suddenly become that if, depending on your chart, what else is going on, you could discover that you're an artist or creative. And you now step more, more fully boldly into, remember, it's a Mars energy. So we're taking bold initiatives. We're taking bold. There's an opportunity opens up for a creative outlet that will be financially abundant because the second house is talent that makes you money. It's not just talent that looks fun. <laughs> um, and that's why people don't trust their talents. I tell them if it's in your second house, you can make money at it. So trust, you know. Um, so we've got some good things happening in your second house and maybe perhaps eliminating some financial fears. Like you get over like, ha, huh, thank God, like something comes in. Yay. You've been waiting for a financial sort of a release or income or improvement. And that happens. Um, what else are we looking at your Mars house? And it could involve a partnership, um, coming in that you're going to collaborate and income with. Um, you have Taurus in your eighth house. Sun, windfall, joint resources coming together with a partner, joining resources. Um, you could invest together. Um, or you're just you're just pulling your resources together, or you become wealthy through a new partnership and they have money, which then maybe enables you to financially take some creative projects that may not bring money right away, but you can afford to to develop a creative project, you could suddenly get income from an outside source, an investment into a creative project that you want to do. You could suddenly get financing for a creative project. This is the time to, this is bold, Aries energy. North Node is in Aries. Take bold initiatives. Go for things. Risk. This is a risk-taking energy. Take the risks. The more you risk, the more you're not afraid, the more abundant you're going to be in these energies. It really is about being bold and courageous and believing in yourself. And actually a full moon in the second house will reveal if you are not, if you have low self-esteem or you don't believe in yourself and you, and there's some sort of, it will reveal. I had a full moon in my second house and I saw how I was not valuing myself and it was painful. I'm not going to kid. It was very painful, but I saw that I was not valuing myself. So somehow, um, you might see that, but then it makes you start valuing yourself. You stop seeing yourself in a smaller light or, or comparing yourself, like thinking if you're too old for 
something and you're not pretty enough or something. I'm just saying, you know, thinking of something. You then start, wow, going, whoa, I don't value myself and I'm basing my self-value around my looks. And then that transforms and you suddenly go, I don't care about that. And then suddenly you do feel more confident about the way you look because you're, you base your value on something more intrinsic and then that shows, that shines through into better self-value. So then that shines through better in the way you look because you just love yourself better. Didn't we just get a card about that? But anyway, so <laughs> so this full moon might, might reveal a painful, low self-esteem self-image that you hold, which will be transformed, eradicated, by gone. And um, but it might be painful, but but the benefits of this is better income, some kind of creative project, perhaps, working with a with a person. Um but again, with these liberation finances in your in your eighth house, you're liberated financially very much. So could be very, very good finance, finances for Libra. All right, Libra, the date Ooh. palm Ooh, flower. Is is, that relationship or what? <laughs> it's pretty clear. And the messages shift the paradigm. It activates freedom from extremes. This feels to me like Libra. I think of the the scales you know, the two sides of the scales that are looking to yeah. balance each other. This is what this feels like to me. It's a time to balance the scales. I mean, you think about that too, in terms of, it could be money as well, like balancing the scales in terms of money, um, in terms of relationships, in terms of how we value ourselves versus maybe giving too much of ourselves away to someone else. Um, this is a, say that one more time. Well, that's kind of the Libra thing that's changing about them with that South node. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then it's this moment to moment awareness. So I guess that's the, a reminder for Libras too, is to just be mo aware from moment to moment, how you're feeling, how you're feeling in relationship to another person and how you might be able to bring yourself in balance if you're feeling a little off, you know, because with Libras, they can give too much to try to keep the peace in order to make themselves feel okay. And this might be a, 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 an invitation for them to be aware in the moment and shift the extremes that they've had in their life when it comes to relationships and or money um, and or their value as well. So the date palm flower for Libra. Is my memory serving me correct? Or was that the last flower we pulled for Libra last time? Because I think it is. Ooh, I will look. I think it is. Uh, yeah. I, let me see. I will. Um, yeah. Yeah. That would let be interesting know. if it is, because if it is, if it, if it is, then it's an area that they, that Librans really need to focus on. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. All right. Let me, I'll, while you can talk while I um, check search. that out. Okay, so now we're going yeah. into Scorpio. So it's <clears throat> full moon in your first house. You're identity. I just, so funny. I just did a reading for a Scorpio. <laughs> And I, she had this hat on and I was like, I bet that's a new thing. I bet that's a new vibe for you because that's, that is hilarious. So when you have a full moon in your first house, your image completely changes. You change your haircut. You, I, I had a full moon at first house. I started wearing bangs, you know, or you start wearing a hat, you know, you, <clears throat> it's weird. And it's usually around your face because the first house is your face. It's your head uh -huh, uh -huh. And, and your body, but also really the head because it's Mars. And um, so there's like a new identity um, and you, it's, it's, it's a good thing because you're breaking out of a fear. It's more authentic version of you. It's, 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 um, <clears throat> shall we say <clears throat> communication for Scorpio too. Um, and just really quickly, Madeline, you know, the date palm flower was for Leo. So you were close with the L. It just, uh, yeah. so it wasn't for Libra, but they had another white flower, I think, but okay. Um, yeah, I didn't, I just saw Leo first. So I didn't <clears throat> okay. Go. Because I remember when you did Libra last time, it was white flowers. And I said, wedding, weddings. And I happened to know a Libra moon who's going to be getting married. So That's I just thought, fun. yeah. But anyway, okay. <clears throat> so Scorpio have all of these Aries going on in your sixth house. You have, to, so you're going to have uh, your, so some, wow. Scorpio, aren't you Scorpio? Okay. Yes. You're going to Jupiter in your seventh house. All right. Something crazy big is going to happen to your spouse. Good potential windfall. Liberating. Yay, Misha. I know. <laughs> Misha, <this> side. <laughs> He'll be happy. I want, 
to know what happens. Okay. I want to know. So, and again, with this Uranus Jupiter conjunction thing, it can just be seeds that are sprouting and you don't see this big windfall yet, but you're on the path and it's going to work out because you know, this transit is happening during this transit. So some, and it's, and the sun is in Taurus at that time. So it's like, Something happening in your relationships that's very liberating for you financially. Um, for one person I was reading for, it was potentially that they could be supported by their spouse now for a while. Um, well, and and it's interesting because his moon is also in Taurus. My moon is in Taurus. So oh. there's a lot of that energy already. This mm -hmm. Uranus, this Uranus um, Jupiter conjunction is happening almost exact mm -hmm. to his son in Capricorn. Oh so my God. You know, and I keep telling him that there's some, just hang tight. You know, there's, yes, some, there's things that are shifting. And finding his son in his set in the 11th house. And, you know, the 11th house, uh, he's got Capricorn there because he's Pisces rising. So this, this is great for him. Yes, he could suddenly get into a very positive path towards recognition, notoriety, fame, all of that. Yeah. A lot of famous people have their son in the 11th house. Okay. And I'm it's the recognition from your peers. <clears throat> or a big win, a big windfall of some sort. That's really, I think, what he's looking. He, he's looking, he, you know, like most men, no offense, guys, but you guys mostly are out there looking for show it to me, prove it to me, let me see it. So until you actually see it or experience it and there's proof, they're like, mm, I don't know. Well, this might be the proof. <laughs> yes. And selfishly, I want to be there to, in my head, I won't say it out loud, but in my head to be like, I knew it. I knew it. Yep. I knew it. Yep. He's going to be saying you were right. <laughs> uh, all right. So we digress. We're back to Scorpio. Yeah. Um, what else can we say? So, yeah, I mean, you know, great, great. As It sounds so silly to say that, but I mean, this could be very fine because Scorpio is ruled by Pluto and Pluto is squaring this, um, you know, full moon. So we've got some kind of radical shift and change in financial. So it's, it's, it's a, a, a potential windfall. Like for me, I had the square from this to my eighth house, which is Pluto, which was a win, which really was a windfall. So this, this is really good. Um, um, <clears throat> and it, again, being the Scorpio energy, you may face, face a fear, um, it's emotional. Um, there could be conflict in your relationship because it's opposition to your relationship. So like, an, like, let's say something happens, it's really big and exciting. There's yes, but there's a fear connected to it. And I don't know. And there's a fear and you get in an argument with them and you go, but you can do it. No, I don't think I can do it. Yes, you can. <laughs> Have I you know. been eavesdropping? Have you, have you been <laughs> hanging out and like plant a little bug in, in my house? <laughs> yeah. You know, so there's an emotional component to it all. Um, it's intense. Intensity is always involved when Pluto and Scorpio are involved. So is this going to be interesting? I want to know what happens. <laughs> I will keep you posted yeah. privately and I'm sure here as well. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I love this card. I mean, this pretty much sums up everything you were saying before. Again, we have yeah. that focus like in the, the center that that coming in and then expanding out. It activates optimism and the message is expect the best. I mean, that pretty much is what you were saying. So I know I was kind of lost for words. I was just going to say it's great. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But I guess the, the one part of this, though, that I would like to share with any Scorpios out there is that it is and it might also be very uncomfortable and feel emotionally challenging. So yeah. just know when you're in maybe the swirl of that that there is this beautiful opportunity on the other side that's that's waiting for you. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Great. Well, I mean, I hate to say that's just the word that keeps coming through. I mean, I just really <laughs> do like that. <laughs> it's like, but, you know, again, with that square to Pluto, just be prepared for a fear to pop up, which Scorpio tend to have, you know, in, in their past life trauma, uh, psyche body is there in the Scorpio. So that'll get purged another big layer of that. So that'll be, yeah. Great. And the other thing too, is that may already be happening to people. So if you mm -hmm. feel like, you know, cause that, that actually, I had a situation just yesterday and the day before of that, like some very deep karmic other lifetime fears yeah. around speaking and death. 
I mean, that's pretty big, especially yep. considering what I do for a living. <laughs> you know? So if I can't speak or express myself or talk because I'm fearful that it will hurt me in some way, or I could potentially lose my life or my career or my livelihood, mm -hmm. that's, that's a pretty significant fear. Yep. To, to it's overcome. what I call bone rattling. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is bone rattling. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So what about those Sagittarius and, and their, this is 12 yeah, for them. You which guys is are ruled by Jupiter. So this is going to be interesting for Sagittarians. Awesome for Sagittarians because they're ruled by Jupiter and, you know, um, their life is going to radically change. Um, but in, in a positive and of course, I mean, again, there may be a crisis occurring, but it'll be fine. You've got Aries. You've had the eclipse in your, in your fifth house, which is giving a creative project. Um, I'm sun sign Saggy, so this is good. Um, a relationship from that eclipse, very much bringing collaboratives, uh, creative projects and relationships with the Aries eclipse there or pregnancies or th that third creative element, that thing that comes out of the, of the out of your relationship, creative project comes out through the union and of two people. Um, and we have Uranus and Jupiter in your sixth house of work and disease or, or, or stress day to day. Um, so uh, uh, possibly a, a relief of that, all those things, six house, like breaking free from stress, fears, and maybe a disease um, if, if you're ill around something. Um, but this Scorpio energy is hitting your, um, <clears throat> where the heck is Scorpio? Oh, you're a Scorpio for Sagittarius is in your 12th house. So um, you could travel, you could move to the country, you could, uh, 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 Scorpio in your 12th house can be past life relationship coming in, your divine mate, past life relationship, um, a karmic re revelation of a fear, a transformation of a deep traumatic fear, trauma um, fear that has been rattling your bones is now released because that's going into your sixth house. So you, you could have this sort of spiritual evolutional rapid growth that 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 puts you in a state of tremendous faith around your work um eliminating fears is a big one for you this 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 lunation um so what else can we look at there um a death and rebirth around uh, a, a old so it's kind of like an old way of living that was trauma fear based is shed is released a skin is released. There's a death, the death card, transformation, restored, rebirth. So it's like fresh rebirth, a new birth in clear, clearing, which now you operate from a place of clear of cleared karma. So you're up. So in other words, the fear-based, stress-based, um, motivating drive is 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 watered down is 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 soothed is healed is the four this four of swords in tarot like the peace card um so we're looking at being completely relieved of some sort of stress space which reminds me i want to look at this for a minute this is it happening at four degrees scorpio um so Wow, it is it is a four degrees Scorpio it is the five of cups. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, so it's almost like. Um, I'm going to say uh, programming because sometimes karma plays out in our programming. And in other words, we're, we're making we're, we're anticipating a future based on our past thinking, thinking our past. So we're thinking it's in the future. So we're clearing all of that and we're opening up to a whole new future. That isn't what we could think of. It's like the karma is cleared around around the fear that it was blocking, um, which is kind of the theme of this whole, whole thing. Um, so I would say for Sagittarius, it's really positive. Because you've had that creative eclipse in that fifth house, which I think is really opening up career and work and eliminating fears of survival on a very deep level. What'd you get? 
Okay. So this is one of the cards that um, it's set up a little differently than the cards in my deck. This was one that I, I, a flower from the flower evolution program of at Lotus way, which is the deck that I am using. And it's the products that I use. And this one was one that was in their, in their program where you worked with it for a month to see what the effects were. And this particular month was when I was traveling. So I didn't take it with me because I wanted to be fully present with the experience, but what I find so interesting is that when I was reading the little write-up on the back as you were talking, it talks about, and you were talking about how, you know, with this 12th house too, there's there's this connection with karma. There's the connection with um, other lifetimes and, and this, um, it, it feels like almost like a completion time. Like uh, uh, it feels like a pivot is, is about ready to happen for Sag and mm -hmm. so, some, some people may be coming back around. So this dissolves fear of attack or malevolent people. And my first thought when I read that was the fear of being hurt again by someone, the fear of attack by someone from the past. Um, there could be somebody that you were connected to at one point and they caused you a great deal of pain, but now that energy has shifted. Um, yeah. This is also take a, taking a stand energy. So I also feel like that is standing in your own power. You've learned all these things to this point. Now what, you know, what are you doing differently if put in the similar situation with somebody? And then one other, the other piece that really jumped out at me, and I, I think it's for somebody that's listening, is that it turns a, a, a lustful energy or this like feeling into a spiritual type of love. It's a transformational uh, energetic. So uh, <laughs> this is this is called Society Garlic, by the way. I don't think I said what it was. So Society Garlic. Thoughts, Madeline? Well, I forgot to add the whole sexual element to the Scorpio thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, here it okay. is. So in that's the sex life opening up in all of these people's reports that I've given so far, especially the Virgo one, because Scorp Scorpio's over there. No, well, whoever had something over their eighth house. Anyway, um, uh, that was Virgo, but they've got Aries over their eighth house. So they, you know, but Scorpio is also sex uh, tantric or higher or could be superficial, lusty sex, but mostly um, deep soul connected. Yeah. That's yeah. tantric. But that's another element everyone should throw in there in the mix, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so Sagittarians, um, that card, can you do mind showing that card again? I do not. Time? So yeah. I think you're going to laugh. So the sixth house is the busy house. Busy. Does that card look busy to you or what? It looks pretty darn busy. There's a lot happening. And I, yeah, and I forgot to mention that. So the card brought that in. Yeah, prepare you guys to be very busy, and you know what? I've been extremely busy. It's crazy. <laughs> the amount of things I've had to do lately. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Capricorn. Speaking of busy and hard workers, there you go. Yeah, yes, well, Capricorn are really in for some good luck with this Uranus Jupiter conjunction because it trines your, it trines your, um, it trines you. Um, so there's a potential Earth trine. I have actually a, quite a few planets. I have my Mercury being trined by this. So this could be good news, very good news. So I have Cap, um, a few planets in Capricorn. So, um, yes. So we're looking at a lovely Uranus-Jupiter conjunction for you guys. And um, abundant. And uh, But it also what's crazy is um, this is happening in your fifth house. Jupiter Uranus conjunction, not this, not the, not the full moon, but I'll talk about that. So the, so sudden, I, I have a Capricorn. My ex-husband is Capricorn rising, and he's been working on a creative project with a band. And I bet that thing's going to take off. It's going to take off, and, and and be really good money, because it's a really cool band. And um, and so I say for you guys, Scorpio. Whoa, Scorpio is your eleventh house. Really good for Capricorn. Isn't Mish, Misha's Capricorn son? Wow. Yeah, he is. This is crazy great for Capricorns. Oh my gosh. You guys are going to have this hitting your 11th house. Full moon. Recognition. Scorpio. Rich is the money. I mean, this is definitely windfall. Good luck. I mean, having Aries in your fifth. You no, know, Taurus is in your fifth. Aries in your fourth. Again, that's hitting your Aries, your yeah. fourth house. So it's like a living situation. 
um, opens up here, you probably suddenly have a lot of more money. I know this Capricorn, he's been in a roommate situation. He's been trying, my ex-husband, he's living with, I know he's going to probably move into it. You'll be able to afford to move into a really nice house. I mean, this is just like financial. I mean, you know, Uranus and Jupiter in the, in the luck of the, in the fifth house, which is a house of like fun and joy and play. And I mean, you know, how, how could this be any better? You know, and then you've got this Pisces in your third house. I mean, you know, I, 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 I see Capricorn busting through, they busting through a big, a big, you know, psyche body fear base that's been holding them back because a lot of Capricorns have not, are not, I want to say brave enough. That's the right word because my ex-husband would always work in TV or movies and he didn't like that work, but it, it it made him feel financially secure, but he was always wa really wanted to be a music producer for, for music bands. Mm. And now all of a sudden that's totally happening for him. He's been on this project and we got divorced. And so he didn't have to worry about finance and the kids grew up. So his responsibility for the family went away. And um, now he's able to focus. So the Capricorns are going to do better when they focus on creative projects and they don't walk that, that financially secure, stable path. They're not happy. So this is like a creative out, a big burst of creative excitement on a creative project. And I mean, they're going to have the funding for it. The money's there. The money's going to be there with that Pluto there with that, with this whole, the whole deal with that Jupiter Uranus training their ascendant. I want to add one thing about that Almost lost because, the words, actually. because of the because of the Jupiter Uranus though the money is likely going to come in a surprise pathway I'm so sure Capric Capricorns like to know okay it seems to, it for them it's like well I'll do this and then I get that or I follow that and then I get this or the money will come this way because that's how it usually does or that's how I can see mm -hmm. But I think that one of the yeah. key elements, and I've got a couple of Capricorns and one of them, I know you know who I'm talking about and I love you, is is that, and it's not my husband, which, but I do um, love him, is that it, it's that Uranus energy is the surprise element of a pathway that opens that you don't expect. Mm -hmm. And when you are when you are living true, to your Jupiter. You talk about this all the time, Madeline, when you're living true to your Jupiter and you're lined up with what lights your soul on fire, the things that you are passionate about, the things that feel expansive, that is when everything just boop, 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 clicks into place. And so as a reminder to Capricorns, it's be open to the opportunities that might present that might not be what you think they are, but feel really good they can feel good and they can feel scary at the same time but taking that leap of faith and trusting i would think this is always gonna this is all gonna feel a little scary to everyone this, mm -hmm. this full moon yeah so the flower is the Ooh. ice icelandic wow. lichen or lichen i don't know how you say that exactly but what this strikes me is you can see it's a very low to the ground type of flower so it it almost reminds me of that earth energy of of Capricorn in a way it's like close to close to the earth and feeling very grounded um it rem, it dissolves fatigue fragility and the lack of follow-through now Capricorns typically aren't ones who lack the follow-through on most things but they might lack the follow-through on things that they don't feel are going to move them ahead mm -hmm. or don't feel like they're going to have the the windfall from that they yeah. desire so I think this is just a reminder of, of taking that leap. Um, it amplifies tenaciousness. So get tenacious about the things you want, you know, really go for it and ground yourself, root it into actionable steps, root it into um, things that, that are tangible, that will lead you to the next step into the next step into the next step. So um, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. yeah feels very cool. Yeah. yeah and also okay. that looks like an audience to me. It could. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of people. Yes. And you know, the fifth house is the house of Leo, which is the house of lighting other people up, uh, shedding, yeah. uh, you know, uh, igniting other people An right. audience, igniting a bunch of people. Light them up. All right. And you know that Uranus Jupiter conjunction is in the fifth house, which is the house of the stage, celebrity performing. 
So they suddenly become famous and well-known. That could happen to my ex-husband because of this band. Or yeah. your, your Capricorn people. Yeah, it really could. I could see that for, for a couple of them, actually. Uh, maybe, maybe more than two. I mean, my son too, he's a, he's also a Capricorn. So this could be something pretty big for him also. Um, okay. Um, Aquarius, this might be a big thing for their career. Yeah. Well, Pluto in your first house and you know, so you've got Pluto, the planet that's ruling this, uh, full moon in your, in your first house. So for sure, some sort of like, um, something is coming in here. Um, could be relationship, could be real true love, like your soul, your twin flame type of deal. Um, or um, you are shed of a rapid, like, where's Scorpio falling in your house? Hang on a minute. Um, tenth. Ninth, oh, tenth. I've got Aquarius. So we have Capricorn over there, 12th, Saggy. Scorpio over their 10. Okay. So we're looking at, see, now here's what's interesting for the Aquarians. I think they're all going to wake up because I think the Aquarians, as we've talked to before, they're leading us into the new, into the new era. They're the most reluctant ones of taking us there because when you're take, there's, there's reluctance when you have to lead. (laughs) So I, I think this is a transformational thing where Pluto and right where you, uh, Jupiter and Saturn can join in your first house there. In 2020, you're now removed of the fear that's stopping you from stepping into your calling, your Dharma, you're, you're bringing Aquarians are bringing us into the new earth. Um, so Aquarians are going through a big transformation. They are going into their power. They're re- having a total and utter rebirth. And the first house is our ego too. So it's like they're, they're, they're understanding um, how to work with the ego because when you're Aquarius, you're out in a lot of people. You, it's, 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 a very, it's a very sort of public stage. So the ego is like, e, I don't know. I'm not, you know, I'm a little weird or you might. So now what we're, we're, that's going to die. So now we've got these Aquarians stepping forward. And I've seen this on YouTube, really powerful people stepping forward. And they're some of the strongest presenters of YouTube stuff. They're going to do fewer Aquarius. And you have any interest in starting a YouTube channel or anything like that, this is a good time to do it. Um, In fact, taking risks in these energies are going to be very favorable for everybody. But with this uh, um, (coughs) Scorpio over your 10th house, I mean, this is a career, a new opening a new opportunity uh pay raise uh if it could be a whole new uh, a whole new career uh, it's part of this mars ruled eclipse so uh, a promotion or a better upgrade in your work it is all about your career also you might suddenly become better status you might get married you might because if, if sometimes the 10th house is your status so you change status you become mr or mrs but also you could get notoriety, you get, you get an upgrade in your career. You have new responsibilities. Um, and it could be a career you were afraid to do. You've always been afraid to do it. Like this, this, this Aquarian thing where they're not really, uh, some of them are. Ha- so, so the Aquarius is going through, through transformation from being kind of hiding to not hiding. You know, that's kind of the main energy because the 10th house is being seen. And Aquarians, that's the 11th house, which is, Again, a celebrity type type of a house where you're recognized by your peers. So, and let's look at their Uranus Jupiter thing, which is in your fourth house. So suddenly moving, suddenly changing location, something happening in your property, real estate, maybe sells or goes up in value and you sell it, or you dump some property or you buy a property or invest in something that liberates you so you can take a new career. Um, let's take a look. This also feels like for Aquarians too, it's like if they've been having a, if they've been having a tough time and the thing, life just isn't feeling like it's lining up. They feel like they keep getting blocked and stopped and, and thwarted. Um, I, I, it feels to me like there may be some misalignment or a misinterpretation of some of the energies that they're experiencing. And it's, um, it's important for them right now to, um, 
to, to get back into their Aquarian kind of uh, energetic. So be a little bit more social, get out there and put yourself out there, do the things that make you an Aquarius versus the opposite that they, that they might've been doing that doesn't feel like it's working because you're working. It's almost like they're working against themselves in a way. They're not doing the things that really are lined up with who they, who they are. And right now is a prime opportunity for any Aquarians out there who would like a, a bolstering of their career to really get back in tune and in touch with what it means to be Aquarius, what that, and what that means to you. Yes. So like the Aquarians are the water bearers. They're the, they're not necessarily, they're not water obviously, but they, but they bring the knowledge and they bring the water people together. They galvanize people. They bring people together. Um, and, but they, and they're, they're like amazing at social networking and all that mm -hmm. stuff. And so what, what happens for Aquarians is there, there's, it, it really is the energy of sudden out of the blue fame and, and recognition, because what happens is they, and a lot of celebrities, you'll see this in their chart is that they get over themselves. They get over, over, they think everyone's looking at them and thinking that they're not perfect or something. They, and they, they suddenly let their excess because they're always going to be eccentrics. Aquariuses are eccentric. They're the oddballs. So they're always going to have this sort of eccentric liberation to liberate their true ex, uh, eccentric selves. They let their, their weirdness shine. They're, you know, they, they, they can sometimes dress really, um, kind of um like like I'll tell you who's a really typical Aquarius I don't know if his son is Aquarius but is is Brand what's his name Russell Brand oh right you know where he, where he dresses his own way and they do their own thing and they come out bold it's their own kind of unique maybe weird you know but they embrace it when they embrace that's about them what is odd and weird and different and they just make that they they underscore it they 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 know that that's who they're here to be because that makes them entertaining yeah. So, you know, yeah. but if you, ha but it takes a transformation for them to not be afraid of that part of them to show it out. So we're going to see that with Aquarians because it's time, especially with Pluto there right on their ascendant. Well, the card that came out for Aquarians is Euphrasia wow. and this activates intuition. The messages be decisive and it magnifies trusting yourself. And that feels like really the key element or the key message for Aquarians trust in yourself I, I don't even I don't even want to elaborate on it I just feel like <laughs> just take that in just anchor that in anchor that in mm -hmm. Aquarians yeah. have um Sagittarius over their 11th house so you know this Jupiter conjunction Uranus is very lucky for them very good luck um and I think the universe is handing Aquarians extra because they're supposed to take us into the new earth. Yeah. So, and I just, I, away, Aquarians will follow. And, well, and the one other piece of it too, that I'm, I'm just noticing with the, with Aquarians that I know is they're the, the person that, that thwarts their forward momentum, the most is themselves. Mm -hmm. The, the, the thoughts that they think the limited beliefs that they grasp onto are the are the things that really keep them stuck or keep them from from moving forward in the way that they are totally capable and able to do and so if they can take their aquarian mind and continue to expand it continue to open themselves up to the blessings that exist and trust themselves i feel like that's the it's like the oof. well yeah because you know that it's very very well said because they're ruled by saturn so um, they would be oppressed, self-oppressed mm -hmm. until they know or there's some sort of ego security feeling that it, it can be a, it can be sometimes they just bust out of themselves and they get over it or an opportunity comes in that really helps them. Yeah. Feel. Feel that way. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Pisces. Okay. So are we on Pisces already? Wow. We okay. Are. Pisces. Um, okay. So we've got this Scorpio for you guys is your boop, booty, boop, ninth house, right? Or eighth? Ninth. You were right. Yeah, I'm feeling so dyslexic today. <laughs> All right. Eighth in, in the ninth house. Um, 
Pisces could either travel, you know, that's a standard thing for the ninth house, uh, an opportunity to learn, go through some sort of a course, take on a course or teach. These are all ninth house things, but a uh, full moon there, it's, you're going to like this is a mind opening blow up like, boom, like, wow. Okay. I see something. I get it. Big awakening, spiritual awakening, um, powerful overcoming a fear of spirituality or, or, you know, a lot of times when people are super skeptical of all this, they, there's some sort of a fear beneath it. So it's like breaking through some sort of finding spirituality heal that heals the fear, finding faith that heals a fear that's blocking the Pisces because Pisces can be walk the path of poverty and they can for long periods of times and they can be very doomsday. We've talked about this. So now yeah. we're getting, sort of faith restorative faith it could be a, a a a crisis an existential crisis which then gets stored into a new faith it's almost like i saw this happen um um a, some astrologers have been going through existential crisis because that woman who committed suicide or that crazy kind of happened on the eclipse she was an astrologer and she like murdered her wife her husband and children it was nice yeah, oh it's, it's her name was Lipstick Mystic or something like that. Yeah, it was quite uh, uh, intense experience, very Scorpio type of vibe. And she committed suicide on the eclipse because she had very powerful astrology anxiety. So, 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 sort of, sort of people been sort of downing and putting astrology down as some sort of bad thing that was behind some of this. But really, what it was was a spiritual existential crisis that. Um, um, obviously, she took it really, she had other stuff going on. It's not astrology because you can get very astrologically uh, triggered and feared by some of these transits. But um, it's but what happens is when you go through that, and, and I think this happened to a lot of astrologers when they were when they went through a little bit of a existential crisis around it. Like, wow, is this astrology bad? Should we not believe in it? Is it just really going to freak? Is it really, really just kind of freaks us out? Like, should we just not know anything you know but then what happens is you get restored to an even higher faith in it because you see that it was not having faith behind the astrology that causes the problem in other words to not see the positive to not see the divine outcome in it all can throw you into a state of uh, anxiety so so we're seeing that kind of thing with the ninth house full moon in scorpio where you're you're breaking through an, a spiritual existential crisis when you open up your mind you get it you see that we're supposed to not be in our fear-based headspace, and and you and because the 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 ninth house can be rigid thinking, right? It, it, it's like non-open-minded, which is shadow aspect. So now we're breaking through some sort of rigid thinking, and we're having a higher divine spiritual understanding, which is faith, because the ninth house is about faith. It's Jupiter. So we're now stepping out of some sort of fear of the spirituality and and opening it up and seeing and having faith in it it, it, it it's, it's like an awakening out, out of a fear around spirituality or some sort of fear blockage connected to it which is all in rigid thinking does that make sense yeah it does i i i feel like i want to add one little tidbit to sure. that which may seem antithetical considering that i do these cosmic chats with you every mm -hmm. two weeks but you know, I feel like all of these spiritual sciences that I work in every single day with, for myself and for my clients are, they're just little hints at life and that we really do have a lot more um, influence over how our life plays out. Like just because the stars or a chart or something shows us something, there's so many different D variations of how that energy may show up. So, you know, it, it definitely sounds like there was maybe some sort of, some sort of instability within this one particular woman that went into such a place of fear around something she saw in astrology, because, you know, I know that sometimes I'll look at a chart and I'm definitely no expert by any stretch of the imagination. Just, I feel like the, when I look at things, I get a lot of intuitive knowing, and then I'll talk to Madeline or other people that will corroborate that. But the way that energy shows up, the story that unfolds can be very different than the picture that's shown on that chart. And 
however, the, the themes might be the same. But I think it's like if we give too much of our power away to astrology or to human design or to uh, an intuitive or to whatever, that we're losing out on the creation power that we each carry within ourselves. And I feel like the cosmic chats that we do are such a beautiful place of empowerment for people, for them to recognize the power that they have within themselves and then use their own creative life force to create a life of their choosing. There are some difficult and challenging energies that we're that we all face but it's how do we navigate them and what do we do with them and so yeah um I, I feel like too with this Pisces ninth house energy you were talking about this papaya flower which I mean if you look at it it looks very sweet and gentle is a great um counterpoint to some of the intensity that we were just talking about and this is um an energy of receptivity. So allow yourself to be receptive to, to the, to the energies that are, are there and that the uh, gentleness can be powerful and that collaboration, that. collaboration yeah. with other people or with the cosmos or within your, within your own energetic body is a really uh, magical place, a magical place to be. So I really love the papaya flower on so many levels, just based on, you know, all that you, just shared and, and the transmission of, of information and energy that just came through. So, um, yeah, well, what I like to say about all this is tarot and oracles or <clears throat> astrology is that these are all tools. Yeah. And, and, and even like religion and, and Christianity and all these, these are just tools. They're just, uh, you know, and, and for everybody to sort of think one is bad or it's like, you can't say a hammer is bad. If somebody, you can kill someone with a hammer and then yeah. it's bad, but you can build a house with a hammer. That's good. So yes. these are, and you don't have to put judgment on them. They're, they're either, they work for you or you don't find a connection with them that helps you. Like none of it is really, well, you know, some of it can be bad, but <laughs> on the whole, the intention behind it is what matters. Yeah. And, um, and that's with, with it all you know? So yeah. I love that. That's such a good, great point too, about it's they're they're all tools. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, and if you find that they're helpful and supportive and they, they offer you some, some peace, um, I say that, how can that be a negative in your life? You know, when, yeah. I mean, I know that, I mean, I love my cards. I think they are so much fun. Yeah. I, I, I feel like they're, and I have so many decks and I find them all equally powerful and beautiful and magical. I have some favorites, but they're, they're really helpful. Oh, the amount of people that think tarot is bad and evil, it just blows my mind because I'm telling <laughs> yeah. you, I, I was with Dan the other day and he, we were at his sister's house and she lost her dog. And we, we were like, oh shoot, and they pulled a card on it. I had my card. So I pulled a card. I got the chariot card and I thought, well, somewhere in a car, a car, something to do with a car. Anyway, we were walking up and down the block. We couldn't find the dog. And then I had to leave. And then I got a text saying he was in the garage. Where a car would be. Yeah. And I'm like going, why didn't I think that? I mean, you know, I had intuitively, I kept saying, check the garage, but I didn't listen to that. I kept thinking, no, we got to go find the dog. But anyway, um, I, I've only ever had powerfully positive, absolutely powerful, positive yeah. experiences. So, and also it's in my chart that I have very, very positive um, sextiles and trines to my Mercury and my Neptune. So it shows uh, from an astrological point of view that it is, is very positive. I don't have negative stuff coming through. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's what really works for the individual and to keep an open mind, you know, we, we're yeah. here to explore it all. Um, yeah, exactly. So and you know, the other thing too, just as a footnote with cards, um, because you know, with cards, the, the cards are going to reveal the energy that is within you. So if you are frantic and you are agitated or are upset and you're not in a state of centeredness or at least some semblance of balance, you're going to get a reading from those cards that, that reflect that energy. So for anyone who's, I don't know, I just feel like there's somebody watching this that may be like, well, I'm just going to use my cards to answer these questions for me make sure that maybe you do a meditation beforehand and you, you have literally visualize any non or, you know, any discordant energy being flushed out of you connect with the, the light above you connect with the earth below you find a, a place of center and then ask a very specific question about what might be um, your query. I've doing, yeah. I picked up my first tarot deck in 2007 and it has never, ever, not one thing bad. No, yeah. not. Here comes Dan. <laughs> Anyway, 
Yeah. So anyway, that Listen, that is that what? is the, that is the scoop. Oh, of, uh, oh, so I just had one last thing to say about that green card, which I thought was really beautiful. One yes. that green card really really isn't a you know Jupiter rules Pisces, so that's a very abundant color. That Earth color, the green, and um, so that's really abundant. I wanted to add that in for Pisces, but also that's the energy of grace. So it's almost like it's almost mm. like the Pisces are relaxing about their rigid minded and becoming more graceful about spirituality or other thoughts or other people's thinkings and things like that. So anyway, oh, I, love I, that. That in. I love that feeling. I mean, just when you said grace, it felt like Pisces could just use a little of, of that, that feeling yeah. of grace. I mean, all of us could honestly, but, um, you want to say yeah. hi to James? <laughs> I don't know if he's going to want to when we're still live. Oh my gosh, Dan, you're all no, yeah, we're live, but come say hi. Look at, <laughs> he's always wearing uh um, uh, he's always hello. Wearing, uh, a camo. Camo. You can't, you can't see the whole body. Yeah, he's he's camouflaging, camouflaging himself. himself. He's like, oh wait, no, not you can't see all of me. Thank yeah. you. I had a dapper day. I'm my brown hands. dapper Dan. So I'm <laughs> Pardon? How are you? I'm awesome. I'm Good. awesome. Don't go anywhere. We're going to wrap up so we can hang out oh, and talk. No, we're saying bye now. Oh. You're live. You're involved, okay. but we'll say bye. Yeah. And you can... Well, don't say bye and then call me back when you're right. bye-bye. Okay. <laughs> shy. There's a little bit of shyness. Shy. <laughs> he's so shy. He's so shy. Right. We, we had to get over that. that. He's not. We're he's to get him over that. He's not really shy. I'm kidding. He's not. See you. Anyway. All uh, right, everyone. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you, Natalie, as always. Watching. Thank you all for those who, who stayed with us. Let me see. Um, let's see. Will anybody stay right. this whole uh, Okay. We got a couple of comments, but I'm not sure. I'll, we'll, we'll go, we'll go back to them another time. Um, okay. So thank you very much, Madeleine, for being here. Thank you for all of you who are, you, are, are hanging with us and um, give us like, we need likes. Yes, like, subscribe. follows, comments, all that good stuff. And um, yeah, enjoy the Scorpio full moon. Let us know how it goes. And we'll be back in a couple of weeks. Stay tuned to social media. We'll let you know the when. The where will be here, but we'll let you know when. And um, if what you need- What is it, the new moon? We have a Taurus new moon, right? Taurus new moon next? Uh, yes, Taurus new moon. Yeah, so it'll be a couple of weeks. We'll get back here and then- uh, if you want to reach out to Madeline or myself, all of our information will be below and, uh, we will see you here soon.